Hi, today we are going to talk about the Fornius gangrene. It is named after Jean Alfred Fornia. This condition is named after the Fornius after he published a series of five cases in year 1883. Jean Alfred Fornia was a French dermatologist or venerologist. The condition was first described by a physician named Boren in the year 1764. First described by Boren and named after Jean Alfred Fournier, who has published a series of five cases in the year 1883. Definition of the Fournier's gangrene Fornius gangrene is defined as a polymicrobial necrotizing facetis of the perineal, perianal and genital area. So this is nothing but the necrotizing facetis. The difference is only pilomicro, polymicrobial infection. So multiple organisms, microorganisms are involved in the infections. So, in the criteria he says, minimum 4 variants has to be traced out. So, then only we call it as Fornius gangrene. This is the only difference between the necrotizing facetis and the Fornius gangrene. And moreover that, the area of involved like perineal, perianal and genital area. Here, genital area involves Either it may be male genital or female genital. Coming to the etiology. Initially described as idiopathic. So we don't know the cause. But nowadays 75% of the cases some inciting cause is present. We are getting some cause. In the rest of 25% we are not getting any cause traced out. Infection usually originate from inorectal or urogenital or skin of the genital area. So any scratches or tear in the inorectal region or urinary tract infections or any skin bacterial infections may precipitate the fornius gangrene. Coming to the risk factors. Diabetes mellitus where the patient's immune condition get compromised, alcoholism, chronic alcoholism, malignancy. See, so these are the conditions in which the immune system comes down. And another example is HIV, cirrhosis of the liver, obesity, and malnutrition. So these are the conditions where the immune system of the patients decreases and if we, he get any kind of infection that may turn into polymicrobial infection and leads into the fornius gangrene. Causative organisms Polymicrobial infection Minimum 4 isolate per case most common arrow is E. coli. So one which requires oxygen for the survival, those are called as arrows. So E. coli and most common, common an arrow is bacteroids. So we have to remember this is very important question for the computer exam. So common arrow for in fornius gangrene is E. coli and anaerobe is bacteroids. The other causes like Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, MRSA that is methicillin resistant, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Proteus, Clostridium. So these are the other variants of the infection caused to organisms which may lead into fornius gangrene. Pathogenesis. Bacteria act synergetically. That is a one kind of bacteria give a comfortable atmosphere for the another kind of bacteria. The organism cause obliterative arthritis, 
there will be imbalance between the host immunity and virulence of the organism so immunity will decrease and virulence of the organism will increase that may lead into this kind of condition so bacteria enters there will be fibrinoid coagulation of the nutrient vessels decreased local blood supply to the skin because of the coagulation of the nutrient vessels and because of that there will be a decreased blood supply to the skin and which will decrease the tissue oxygen tension because nutrient vessels got coagulated hence there will be less oxygen supply to the skin of the perineum perianal or the genital area and that will help to grow the anaerobes production of enzymes like hyaluronidase and collagenase it will digest the tissue there and that leads into digestion of the facial barrier so facial barriers got destroyed then the infection will spread very rapidly coming to the pathology necrosis of superficial and deep fascia fibrinoid coagulation of a nutritive artery polymorphonuclear cell infiltration air in the tissue this air accumulation inside the tissue will give a crepitation palpation crepitations for the examination incidence is commonly seen in between 30 to 60 years of age group and as usual the infectious diseases are more, more in female so it's a 10 times more in the female in sorry so 10 times more in the male in comparison to the female social habit more common in male homosexuals where there is a repeated trauma to the anorectal region clinical features begins with insidious onset pruritus and discomfort in the external genitalia fever and lethargy may present for 2 to 7 days before the gangrene cardinal symptoms proportion pain and tenderness in the genitalia so initially there will be only a discomfort and itching will be there and the fever may appear 2 to 7 days before the onset of the gangrene and the cardinal symptom is pain and tenderness dusky appearance of overlying skin and cutaneous cryptations feculent odor obvious gangrene and discharge as gangrene develops pain subsides see initially the skin appears as dusky and there will be yellow or brownish yellow discharge will be there from that and if, 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 if this is a very horrible experience to experience the odor so feculent odor will be there obvious gangrene and discharge will be there and uh, because once this disc, dusky appearance turns into black so there will be a decreased pain because of the necrosis of the nerves so as gangrene develops pain subsides this is the reason for that differential diagnosis we can take the differential diagnosis as cellulitis epididymoarchitis gas gangrene complicated hernia complicated hydrocele necrotizing fasciitis testicular torsion scrotal abscess scrotal hamtoma and vasculitis investigations cbc electrolyte blood urea nitrogen hb1c arterial blood gas analysis 
blood and urine culture and sensitivity, coagulation profile for the Dick syndrome, USG, X-ray, CT or MRI. In CBC, we can assess the severity of the infection, the total count and ESR will give you a lot of idea regarding the, in the assessment. Electrolytes, usually the hypernatremia is seen and if the patient is moved to sepsis, that may, we may get a variations in the HB, sorry, uh, blood urea nitrogen and to assess the whether the patient has immunocompromised, we can check it for the HbA1c that is uh, will give an idea about the sugar level and as well as you can go for the infective profile like HIV also and uh, arterial blood gas analysis to assess the damage on the lungs and uh, blood and urine culture ABG not only for the assessing the damage on the lungs as well as for the metabolic condition also so and blood urine culture and sensitivity as I told the commonest uh, positive organisms are traced from the either from the urinary tract infection or from the trauma to the urinary region so blood as well as urine has to be sent for the culture and sensitivity coagulation profile for the disseminated intravascular coagulation disorder so we have to send it and the x-ray and all plain x-ray we may find as i told there will be a accumulation of the air pockets in the tissue so these uh, air pockets may be seen on the plain x-ray so that will help us to confirm or differentiate from the other conditions usg definitely will give us a lot of idea regarding the vascularity of the testes and the necrotized uh, area and uh, help us to diagnose the foreign AS gangrene mri uh, uh, will give a lot of idea regarding the extension of the diseases coming to the treatment so available treatment can be broadly classified as the medical treatment and the surgical treatment medical treatment reduction of systemic toxicity so we have first intention is to stop the spreading of the infection into the other area restoration of the normal oxygen perfusion and broad spectrum antibiotic especially the commonly used combination cipro clindamycin and metronidazole uh, so this will give a coverage against the polymicrobial infection and if there is a mrsa so vancomycin is the choice of drug surgical treatment repeated aggressive debridement is required so we may not be able to uh, do the debridement in only one setting which may require repeated debridement preservation of the testes so to prevent that desiccation so once the testes is uh, uh, isolated or the separated from the this uh, uh, nephrotized area then those testes can be placed in the thigh making a separate pocket to just to prevent the desiccation usually testes urethra are not involved in the nephrotizing fasciitis this uh, fornius gangrene because they have in separate arterial supply uh, blood supply so that could be a reason for that and usually the anus also not involved anorectal region also not involved so the only perianal and uh, perineal skin is usually involved and uh, once the infection comes under the control then we can plan it for the reconstruction and uh, if the in case if there is any requirement uh, then we can plan it for the fecal or urinary diversion coming to the complication because of sepsis the patient may move into the acute renal failure or acute respiratory distress syndrome septicemia gram negative shock like hypotension or hypoxia tetanus and death so these are the complications of fornia gangrene dear friends this is about brief introduction about the fornia gangrene if you like to have such kind of videos then kindly subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon 
so thank you thank you one and all for watching my video thank you one and all